Hey all, <clears throat> just wanted to do a really quick explanation of column families in CockroachDB. Um, I'm just gonna go through kind of what a column family is, um, as well as why you would want to use one and how it looks and how you can sort of figure out some of this stuff for yourself. Um, so I'm gonna start off with just a little cockroach demo terminal here. Um, and I'm gonna create a new database just to get out of this mover thing. Um, and I'm gonna make a table with a couple of different columns in it. Um, so I'll give an A int, a B int, a C int, and a D int. I think it doesn't have to be integers, but it's just a bit easier to type. Um, I'm also gonna make one I'll call it C and I'll give it some column families and we can play around with the differences between these things as we go. So I'll give this one a family with uh, A, I'll give this one maybe all separate families. And then maybe I'll make one more um, with two families. So we'll have family A and B together and then we'll have a family with C and D together. So what column families are, it's, it's a way to tell the database um, how to split the data up in a table between multiple key value pairs. Um, and of course in CockroachDB, SQL is implemented on top of this monolithic giant key value key space. Um, so we can sort of think of this as instructing the SQL layer how to translate uh, the keys that it writes into different forms. Um, so this as a quick example um, here. I'm gonna I'm trying out this new drawing tool too. So I'll, I'll show you try to draw it out here. So if we have table A in this case, um, table A it only has one giant column family since we didn't specify everything by default. Um, all of the columns are going to live in a sim single column family. And we can actually show that with show create, show create table A. So this is going to have all of the columns that we asked for. Um, it's going to have this primary key constraint, and then it's going to have a single giant default primary family thing down here. Um, and what that means is that um, the actual key value pair that we write, um, maybe, maybe if we say insert into A values, one, two, three, four, what this is going to look like in the key value store part of the database is there's going to be an entry for one and it's going to kind of point to a value that has two, three, and four. Um, and then in, in reality, there's like a little bit more to these keys. Um, so in this case, there's going to be a table ID and an index ID that comes first. So I'll, I'll just sort of represent that as like a, I'll put a slash and then one, which is sort of the index ID. So this is like the table. ID, this is the index ID, and this is the primary key. So the, the point though, is that like in this particular table, this A table, um, there's just one key value pair per row. That's this whole thing. Now let's look at, let's look at table B. Um, in table B, we can say exactly, I mean, it's got the same schema, the same logical schema, right? It has, it has four columns, A, B, C, and D. Um, but there's four families. So what this does is when I say insert into B values, one, two, three, four, whoops, I actually called it C, not B. Um, what this does is it's actually gonna make um, more than one key value pair per, per row. And so let's, let's go ahead and look at the show create table for C, just like we did before. Um, and you can see that, yeah, in this case, you're gonna have four families like we specified. Um, and so what this looks like under the hood is for table C, um, we're going to have kind of for this primary index, which is designated as one, we're going to have multiple entries. The first one, uh, is going to be one points to two on its own. The second one is going to be, it's kind of annoying drawing all these things. I should, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I, there's going to be another one that's going to point to three, which is sort of our, uh, our B column, our C column, excuse me. And then our D column, there's gonna be a, a third entry um, that points to four. And I think there's there's one missing piece here, which is that like, since there are four column families, um, there really should be four entries. And I think that there is in fact going to be one more entry. It's a bit weird because of course, in this case, 
um, a is our primary key. Um, and so that means like, it's going to live in the key part and not in the value part. But I think, I think on disc, and I'll show you how to check this for yourself in a little bit on disc, there's probably going to be another entry, um, that sort of just points to nothing. Um, and there is, I think one more small detail, which is that the actual key encoding on disc is going to have a little marker right here for the family ID, but I'm just not going to bother showing that cause it's, I don't think it's that important. And then in our, our last example is C2. So let's do show create table C2. In this case, we've got two families. Um, and of course you should probably guess, but it's going to look like this. There's going to be two entries instead of four entries here or one entry here, there's going to be C2 index one for our primary key one. This is going to point to two, which is our column B. And then there's going to be another entry that uh, points to three and four, which is our column C and D. Um, okay. So that's that. I wanted to show you now how you can sort of play with some of this stuff and find out for yourself how it works under the hood. Um, so for, for, for this part, I'm going to demonstrate this feature that the cockroach CLI has called auto trace. Um, so you can turn it on like this. You do backslash set auto trace equals on comma KV. Now you can, you might be wondering what's this KV business. I think auto trace on, on its own, it has like a whole bunch of extra info. In this case, we really want to see what are the key value pairs that are getting generated for each statement. So that's why I'm using this KV thing. So you'll just have to remember that for now. So once I do this, every time I run a statement, the database is also going to print out all of the keys that it writes and reads from the database. Um, so if we, if we wanted to do as an example, another insert insert into a values, let's maybe do five, 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 no, we'll do five, six, seven, eight. So we can see what it's doing. Um, like I said before, since this is sort of a single column family table, we should just see one key getting written. So let's watch what happens here. We run this statement. And there's a bunch of stuff here, but the main thing is that this C put command, um, this is the thing that's telling us like what keys actually got written for this insert. And you can see in this case, something sort of similar to what I was showing on the drawing, uh, which is that we're putting a single key that has for table 60, which is the ID of our a table for index one for primary key five. Um, we're inserting some data and this, this format is kind of like ugly, but point is you can sort of see if you squint, you can see the six, the seven and the eight all in one key. Now, if I did this for C2 though, um, or C rather, so this is our table that has four column families. You're going to see something different. You should see four different key values getting written. Let's try that out. So you can see in this case, instead of just inserting one, we're inserting four. We've got a C put for the sort of zeroth column family. We've got one for the first, the second and the third. Also what we expect. And then just to complete the picture, we'll do it for C2. And since C2 just has two column families, you're going to see two, two entries. So this is all super great. Um, now, why would you care about this? Um, the answer is kind of about, uh, I would say the answer is mostly about updates. Um, it's about, can we avoid reading data or writing data, rewriting data when we, when we don't have to, um, in the case of a, of a table that had maybe a very large column, maybe a JSON or a string or some like giant payload, um, in one of the rows or sorry, in the schema, you probably don't want to have to rewrite that thing every time you're updating some other column in the same row. Um, and so you can avoid that by, by splitting that big column out into its own column family. Um, and the update will automatically not update it if it doesn't have to. So we can check that out. Um, if I said update C2 and we'll do set, um, actually we'll start with C. So C is the one with all of the different column families. Every column is in its own column family. Update C set D equals 10 where, uh, A equals five. And so hopefully what we'll see is that this doesn't actually have to put any new keys except for the one that we're editing. So that's our final D column. So there's a few more things in this because there's fetching going on. So you can see the scan that's happening. Um, there's some fetching stuff, but the, the main point is that this put, um, which is different from a C put a little bit, but don't need to worry too much about that. Um, you can see there's only one put, um, which is sort of what our desired effect is. We're only changing one of the keys. We're not having to rewrite the entire 
row every time we change anything. Whereas if we did the same thing for A, um, did I insert? Yeah, I did insert the five, six, seven, eight row into A. If I updated A um, the same way, the difference is that this put, it has to, it's way bigger. It has to put all of the values. It's got to read all the data from disk for that row and then rewrite it all again since it's in the same, same key value pair. If you update a key value pair, you have to update the whole thing. You can't just update part of it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's about that. I think that's basically all I wanted to go through. So so yeah, there's besides also just the, the effect of um, not having to write as much data, I think theoretically you could also avoid contention this way. So if you had a, a bunch of um, queries updating a particular column family, um, I think that you could reduce contention for queries that update just some other column family by, or some other column by splitting those two things into two separate column families. Um, I'm not sure that that actually works, but I think it should. Um, anyway, that's that. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Uh, column families. Thanks.